Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're up to 6.6 .6 proportionality theorems. Up on the screen, you'll see the exit question that you'll find on your exit form this time around. Take a look at it, remember it, answer it as we go along here. So today is a big day because I am going to give you not one, not two, not three, but four new theorems. And your challenge today is trying to figure out when to use which theorem. So I'm going to start off with uh, probably the most important one, the most highly used one. You'll find situations like this all over standardized tests uh, where you have a set of inset triangles. That is one triangle laying on top of another triangle. And the triangle proportionality theorem states that if the if two sides of a shared angle are parallel, then you have this proportion that is true. Now, before when we've done these triangles that have been kind of laying on top of each other, we've been talking about the entire triangles, like the small triangle versus the big triangle. So we would say RQ is to RT as RS is to RU. So we'd use the entire distance RQ and the entire distance RS. But that's not what this says. This says that this short segment here is going to share the same proportion between that or share the same ratio between RT to TQ as RU to US. If you color code it, it looks like this. So you can see that that line, the longer segment to the shorter segment, is going to share the same ratio as the long segment here to the shorter segment there. Now, just be careful on these theorems today because they have different conditions and they prove different things. Our very first one here, the if statement, the condition that needs to be true to work, is that these two lines are parallel. If they're not parallel, this theorem does not apply. But if they are parallel, then you can say that these segments are proportional to each other. The second theorem I have for you today is the converse of 6.4, the triangle proportionality theorem. So it's a mouthful. The converse of the triangle proportionality theorem says that if you take these ratios of these segments, RT to TQ and RU to S or US, and you find them to be the same, that is that they are proportional, then you can prove, you can conclude that TU is parallel to QS, or in other words, that those two lines are parallel. This is a useful thing because it proves that two lines are parallel, and we don't have any other theorems today that do that. Now I'm going to take this drawing right here, and I'm going to modify it a little bit here. So I have it drawn right here, and we have that theorem 6.4 states that RT to TQ should be the same ratio as RU to US if those two lines are parallel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this drawing and I'm going to kind of modify it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tip of the triangle right here, point R, and I'm going to split it. I'm going to take this line and I'm going to pull it down here so that it hinges on S. So I'm just going to kind of swing it down. I'm going to take this RQ distance and I'm going to swing this one up. And then I'm going to connect those two new points with a third line that is also parallel to these other two. So I get a drawing that looks like this. So I took R and I split it into R and R prime and I connected them with a third parallel line. Now this is now theorem 6.6 .6, and all we've done is really taken a triangle and turned it into a quadrilateral with a parallel segment drawn in between. But what's cool about it is if you know theorem 6.4 real easy, the same proportions hold true. So in this case, this segment divided by this segment length should be the same ratio as this segment length divided by this segment length. And in fact, that's exactly what theorem 6.6 .6 says, which is those two things. Uh, stated formally in your book, it looks like this. It's a giant complicated looking drawing and it's drawn backwards from what I just showed you there. But it's the same thing where instead of all segments, you're talking about all lines, so you can see that these lines are being extended in all directions. And But the same proportions hold true. UW to WY is to VX as X is to or XZ. So those share a common ratio. 
Now, the last theorem we have today, theorem 6.7, is a very obscure one that I've never ever used before, and but you need to know it for the test, so here it is. Uh, definitely worth knowing this one, the ins and outs of this drawing. So what this drawing assumes is that you have a triangle. You take a triangle and you take one of the angles in the triangles and you bisect it. So you bisect one of these angles and it intersects the opposing side. That intersection turns the opposing side into two different segments. And what this theorem says is that those two segments that that just got split up into, if I took this segment length divided by this segment length, that that should share the same ratio as the adjacent sides to the bisected angle. So AC to BC. So in other words, AD divided by DB should be the same ratio as AC divided by BC. And I can see down here that it's stated backwards from what I just said, but you get the idea. Now combined with the theorem 6.4, 6.5, 6.6, and 6.7 now, you now have four different theorems and a whole lot of complicated drawings to deal with. So your challenge in today's material is to de determine when to use what theorem for which drawing so that you can find unknowns or perhaps prove that lines are parallel or whatever. So what I have for you on the next screen is a collection of four different geometry problems that have been randomized. Uh, I would like you to absolutely copy down each drawing. I want you to figure out which theorem applies to which drawing. And I will tell you that each to solve each one of these, it requires you to set up a proportion. So I want you to see if you can match the theorem to the drawing and see if you can write a useful proportion equation so that you can either find the missing value or prove what is asked to be proved. I want you to pause the screen, copy down all the drawings, and see if you can write each one of those proportions. Okay, the first one looks like this. This is straight up 6.4, the triangle proportionality theorem. And basically it says that this length to that length ought to be the same ratio as that length to that length. So your proportion should look like this. From there, it's a simple cross product and solve. And you get x equals 28. Simple, easy peasy. The next one I had to do said find the length of AB. Now this one's a little tricky because it doesn't explicitly say in the drawings that these three lines right here are parallel. Now they are parallel because we have a theorem that says if a line, two lines intersect a transversal that is perpendicular to both, then those two lines are parallel. And we can just repeat that one more time uh, for the third line. But in essence, we did get the fact that these, all three lines here are parallel to each other. Once we have that those three lines are parallel, we can use theorem 6.6 .6 that says uh, this segment length divided by this segment length should be the same ratio as that segment length divided by that segment length. And you can see that proportion set up to the left there. And again, it's a super easy cross product solve problem. Set it up, solve it, 19.2, done. The next one I gave you was a problem that asked you to show that two lines are parallel. Now, the only theorem that we had today was that concluded that two lines are parallel was theorem 6.5, the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem. And what it said is if those two segment lengths share a common ratio, then the lines are parallel. So we need to show that these two ratios are equal. So you have to set it up. Uh, I did 90 over 50 and 72 over 40. That would be big to small, big to small. Now, if you go and write just this down on your paper and these two lines didn't happen to be parallel, you would have just written down a false statement. So whenever you set something up like this, that your uh, proportion that you're hoping is true, but might not necessarily be true, I want you to either do it on two different steps or I want you to put a question mark over that equal sign. And that, that question mark signifies to me that, hey, I'm not quite sure if this is true, but I'm gonna test it out and see. So 
In this case, all I did was type the numbers into the calculator and got 1.8 equals 1.8. And that's totally true. It checks out. So therefore, by the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem, then PS is parallel to QR. The very last one I gave you is actually a little tricky. If you notice, we got to find this distance here, and it has absolutely no label associated with it. So the first thing you have to do is to kind of be a little clever and create a ratio or create a label for it. And you can see that there's nothing here, but we do know something about the entire length and we know something about a portion of the length. So if this whole distance is 15, then this distance right here must be 15 uh, with X deducted from it. So 15 minus X in other words. So the first thing I would do is I would throw that label in there that 15 minus X is our Q, the length of our Q. After that, then we're going to apply theorem 6.7, that super obscure one that says that this distance, this segment to this segment is proportional to this segment to this segment. So those share a common ratio. And if you set up the proportion, it looks like that. And you all know how to solve that. Cross products, distribute, combine like terms, divide by 20 and you get 9.75. Down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see your homework for the day. I will see you next time.